Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Parag Jain. I am the Chief Business Officer at LeapFrog. So a quick introduction to the company. I know it's right before lunch, so we are dwindling away. I'll try to keep it brief and to the point. Uh, so we are a, a 5G uh, wireless infrastructure company. The, the focus of the company is to build the layer one physical layer implementation in both uh, IP and silicon to power the next generation of small cells, uh, fixed wireless access, macro, micro base stations. And the approach we've taken is fundamentally building around RISC V, adding, instead of taking a heterogeneous you know, DSP plus processor plus hardware accelerator, heterogeneous architecture, we've taken a scaled tile-based architecture using RISC V plus custom instructions that we have developed for wireless signal processing. So the approach here is to leverage the strength of RISC V, the ability to add custom instructions, the ability to extend the ISA to make it very wireless domain specific uh, and optimized. So quick uh, intro to the team. Uh, Chitu Singh is the CEO. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us today, so I'm presenting on his behalf. So comes from a pretty colorful background at Qualcomm, did many generations of modems. And the entire team is a mix of people from Qualcomm or people from the infrastructure side or from MaxLinear. So a lot of deep wireless expertise, a lot of expertise both in software-based modem design as well as in standardization of 4G, 5G, and beyond, and bringing the best of all those worlds into building the next generation architecture for 5G. Uh, I play the business role. I have been in the Valley for the last 20 years, been involved mostly in computing, doing uh, data center processors. Most recently, I was at Ventana and was driving the processor strategy there. So I've been extensively involved in RISC V from a compute standpoint. And this is our ability to bring both compute and acceleration together on a common platform. So some of the key market drivers, you know, I think we all understand 5G is a lot about a lot more than just voice or data. It's about connectivity for, um, for devices, for smart cities, for surveillance, for IoT. And a lot of that growth is still just starting to happen. It's, it's interesting from an emerging market perspective, as we work with, uh, with governments in India and other geographies, we are seeing the desire for them to be able to build infrastructure grounds up from silicon to system to telecom gear all indigenously. And they're looking for open silicon to be able to do that, as opposed to the traditional, you know, the Norky Ericsson model of black boxes and systems shipped by OEMs. They're looking to develop their own systems, and they're really looking for open silicon solutions to be able to power that. Fixed wireless access is now opening up as the last mile to, for connectivity at home. And then hyperscalers are entering the 5G market, lots of use cases around enterprise and campus networks. So all of this innovation that is happening around 5G is sort of forcing the industry out of the traditional telecom model of there are two or three large vendors who provide black boxes, they write the hardware, they write the software, and they upgrade features, and every all innovation is contained by them. That model is breaking, and people are now looking for commodity merchant silicon uh, systems that are designed by uh, standard third parties that are open in nature. So with that in mind, I mean, we're focused on 5G RAN, we're focused on fixed wireless, we're focused on private 5G, all are huge markets. We're focused also, the IP that we're developing has many wide applications in fixed wireless CPEs and satellite modems in automotive from a sensor fusion perspective. So it's fundamentally an AI-powered DSP building block that can be applied in many different applications. And so we are approaching it both from an IP perspective as well as a product perspective in the layer one physical layer space. So big challenge in 5G, we talked about legacy RAN solutions. These are all proprietary. These are all closed systems. Development cycles are three to five years long, which just doesn't work for the growth that we are seeing with 5G. People have been trying things with Intel, with FlexRAN. I mean, there's Intel, there's AMD, there's NVIDIA. A lot of people are trying to sort of shoehorn general purpose platforms into this space, either as a CPU or a GPU. The limitation is performance. I mean, these are good for prototyping. You can maybe get a gigabit per second throughput. You can demonstrate open RAN systems, but none of them have seen commercial viability because of limitation in performance power price. So our approach is taking the DSA approach and in a chiplet form factor. So we are partnering with companies like Ventana who are building CPU chiplets. We are building layer one five chiplets. We have partners who are building IO hubs. And together we are packaging this all together into SOCs, which can scale all the way from small cell to massive MIMO with the same architecture, same hardware, same software, just scaled in performance. 
and the layer one is implemented again in a tiled fashion with many, many C of RISC V cores with custom instructions for wireless signal processing. We believe with this solution, we can really change the landscape of 5G and wireless in general. And this is very hyperscaler friendly because one of the key things that we hear from cloud customers is we want to be deploying the network at the edge. We want to be able to control that network down to the physical layer, down to the layer one. We want to be able to provision services down to layer one. We don't want a black box system where the firmware is owned by one company. We want it to be an open standard based solution. So that's our fundamental value proposition. We're delivering best in class performance per watt per dollar. It is all software defined. It is all RISC-V based. It's all hardware software co-design. So there are custom instructions that we have added for FFT, for FIR, for all sorts of signal processing applications. But we provide software kernels and interfaces to use those instructions. But the firmware is all written in C, C++. So it's all software based. And it is completely AI enhanced because the same hardware, the same vector units, the same matrix math can be repurposed for both 5G as well as AI. So you can now do AI-based capacity and throughput optimization on the fly, do channel estimation on the fly, do DPD on the fly. All these things that, are, that were traditionally done in fixed function blocks can all be done now using an AI-style design, fully programmable, fully customizable. It's fully future-proof. You can upgrade it to 6G. So the same hardware can be continuously evolved as it goes along, as opposed to with every generation you need to build a whole new set of silicon to get there. It is completely chiplet based, so scalable and modular. We can scale to multiple, and we are working with a full family of companies. We have a demo at the Ventana booth. Ventana is one of our key partners building the compute chiplet. And together, we are putting a solution together that allows us to scale from small cell to fixed wireless to massive MIMO just by scaling the amount of compute and layer one chiplets. It's all standards based. We support UCIE. We support RVV in the future. We're trying to make sure that we are standards compliant to the RISC V ecosystem. We're very grateful that RISC V has opened this possibility, that an architecture is extensible and customizable, something we couldn't have done five years ago. So it's all based on, built on the innovation that people in this conference, people in this room have been doing, and we are beneficiaries of that. So I think we touched on this. I'll, I'll just jump right here. So essentially, the building block of our design is something called a leapfrog processing unit, an LPU. It has a RISC-V core, it has a vector unit, and it has a custom DSA unit, which is all the innovation that we at Leapfrog have come up with in terms of instructions for, ac for accelerating layer one functions. So this single uh, block is then clustered together to build a LPU cluster. That cluster is then put together to build a tile. Those tiles are put together to build a chiplet, and then we can put multiple of these chiplets in a single SOC. So the fundamental building block is homogeneous, as opposed to having uh, honky DSPs and then some hardware blocks for some dedicated functions and some general purpose CPUs and data continuously moving forth back in between them, and then having different designs for a femtocell versus a uh, massive MIMO base station, the same tile, the same cluster can scale to cover the entire gamut of applications. The firmware that is written on it is all again written in C, C++, makes it very easy to adopt and evolve, and it can support AI just like it supports wireless. So as I said, we, we scale all the way from small cell to fixed wireless to massive MIMO. We are also working with cloud guys to completely disaggregate the layer one file. So one of the discussions that we have with the hyperscalers is today the layer one is a monolithic system. Every layer one has a bunch of building blocks, but they all have to be put together, and they all have one single firmware running on them. Can we disaggregate this to say that all channel estimation for 48 base stations should be done by one set of dedicated hardware? And all the uh, FAC or other MIMO DMAP applications can be done in a disaggregated fashion. So we are now enabling hyperscalers to disaggregate the layer one down to a functional basis, not just at a, a physical layer basis. So each of the underlying heavy duty functions of layer one are broken into blocks and they are dedicated clusters of hardware that are just doing that for a, for a, for a whole deployment as opposed to one card dedicated to one base station. So this gives economies of scale, it gives a lot of control, it gives full flexibility to program and deploy, to upgrade, to provide new services without having to go back and redesign the hardware. And we can achieve tremendous TCO benefits both in terms of cost and power. Similarly, in a, in a DU form factor, we are putting a, a solution together that can plug in into a standard COTS server, and this would have a, a sort of multiple of our chiplets packaged together into an SOC. The power that we're looking at is a third of what 
a Qualcomm or uh, any standard uh, sort of embedded style layer one would be. If you compare it to FlexRAN, we are like you know less than a tenth the power. So the advantage here is we're giving you the flexibility of software which you would get by implementing in a general purpose CPU, but the power performance characteristics of embedded hardware, which is fully upgradable and, uh, and flexible. Similar benefits in fixed wireless. We are not married to Open RAN. There's a lot of buzz around Open RAN, but we're also working with customers who are looking for fully integrated all-in-one systems. Here we are implementing the hi-fi and the lo-fi all put together on the same silicon. Plus with the CPU integrated, we can run the layer two, layer three stack on the CPU. We already have design wins with customers on this platform. Mamanir is one of our key tier one OEM partners who's working with us to productize this solution. We have a demo of this solution at the, at the Ventana booth. This solution is a combination of the Ventana processor and the LeapFrog layer one physical layer implementation. Another big debate that is going on in the industry is should the open RAN be look aside or should it be inline? And the difference between the two is when you are inline, the entire design, the entire layer one file is encapsulated as a single uh, system and software looks at it as a, as a single device. In a look aside mode, you can break up the layer one into functions and you can offload specific functions, but all the control function is implemented in software on the main CPU. So there is, you know, there's a huge debate going on between Nokia and Ericsson on what is the best direction the industry should take in the future. With our approach, we can support both models. So you can have a scenario where the entire layer one is implemented in software and we provide a turnkey system. We also have the ability to implement just dedicated functional blocks and the software can still be doing all the layer one uh, software management functionality on the general purpose CPU. So this is what our software stack looks like. We have the DSP, which is what we develop in hardware. It has RISC-V cores, vector units, and domain-specific acceleration. We then develop software kernels on top of it, which accelerate FFT, matrix multiply, FIR, all the standard layer one functions, or rather the DSP functions. On top of that, there's another layer of software that does the layer one five functions in terms of channel estimation, MIMO, DMAP, FEC, et cetera. And then the control can either be running on the host machine, or it could be running inside the layer one file itself. So we expose DPDK style interfaces where a host system can manage and control using uh, front hall APIs, or it can be completely integrated and embedded in the, uh, in the device itself. So this gives you flexibility of both worlds in terms of programmability. In terms of go-to-market, we, we provide IP, we provide chiplets, we provide silicon and reference systems. So our primary go-to-market is to provide a full turnkey SOC, in, including the compute chiplets. We also are open for some large OEMs to sell chiplet as IP. So it could be either in the form of a product or in the form of IP that they, the customers can integrate into their products. As we go forward, we're also exploring the IP model. There are many customers who, for example, we have customers who are building RF front-end devices and they want to accelerate very, very specific functions like DPD. They don't want the full chiplet solution. They just want a few tiles or a single tile that they can use for accelerating one dedicated function. So we're also offering it as IP to customers. So it's a mix of different business models based on where the markets are. We are seeing traction outside wireless infrastructure as well in automotive, in, uh, in client devices, in IoT edge devices. Anywhere you have Wi-Fi or Zigbee or NB IoT or 5G, 6G applications, it all requires an underlying DSP block. This is the next generation RISC-V-based AI-enabled DSP block that can fit into all of these applications. So just to summarize, we are, we are heavily dependent on RISC-V. We are very grateful to the community for all the contributions that are going on. We are getting the best out of it in terms of providing the right acceleration blocks, and we are productizing it in the form of both uh, silicon as well as IP. So I don't know how much okay. time is left. Any, Happy to answer any, any questions. questions? I guess I don't really have a question. I'm more someone that i interested in like buying this thing basically. I don't know how I get in contact because I'm doing a 5G yeah. project, so. Absolutely, so you can come by the Ventana booth. We are, LeapFrog team is there. We are demonstrating oh. 
our okay, system. You guys are at the Ventana booth. Yeah, because we are a partner of uh, premier partner of Ventana. The oh, solution okay. includes the Ventana compute chiplet and the Leapfrog 5 chiplet. So gotcha. we are actually doing a demo of the system at the booth. So oh, please come by. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. How much resource do you need on your uh, DSPs? So maybe Alex, you want to comment on that? Alex is our chief architect. I don't know if everyone heard uh, some FEC and some specialized uh, uh, functions need additional acceleration, but it's done in a very, say, generic way. But it's not a basic vector engine type thing. Yes, so just to add to that, I guess all the underlying instructions that are needed to, for, the, for accelerating something like FEC or LDPC are already implemented in hardware inside the code. And our team is implementing the firmware, the kernels for it as we speak. So we, it's part of our system to deploy a, a 5G solution. If there are specific needs that go beyond, we'll be happy to have, again have a discussion and, and figure out. You know, so we are, we're not productizing it as a general purpose DSP with just a bunch of tools. We are, it will require a little bit of close interaction to, to, to get the, the most out of the hardware. So first of all, thanks for the presentation. Um, my question is on what die-to-die -die protocol you're using for your, your chiplet? Uh, UCIE. UCIE, okay. So that this morning there was a keynote from Ventana regarding their, their next gen. They they noted UCIE, so this is compatible. With exactly, that. this will this will completely fit into that. We are working together to define common packages and common SOCs. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? I mean, that said, we are standards based. We are open to all partners. So Ventana happens to be our closest partner right now. I think that's it. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Now we can head to lunch.